Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I receive. How many of y'all believe you can receive right now because God is in this place? He wants to move in your life. Somebody say, right now, I receive. Whatever you're believing God for right now, go ahead and say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive. I believe God is moving right now on whatever's going on in your life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Amen. He's moving in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. How many of you guys know God is truly good? And I'm telling you, he's too good to not believe. I don't know. I always tell people when I talk to them, I say, it's too late, devil. I done, I done seen God move. I done seen God heal. I done seen God, you know, set people free. He's too good not to believe. I already know what his wonder-working power can do in and through a life because God touched me. God touched me. And I encourage you, listen to me, don't miss out on what God wants to do in it through your life. Believe. Somebody say, I believe. I receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tell the person next to you, say, go ahead and tell them, say, I'm ready to receive today. Tell your other neighbor, say, hey, I'm glad you're in church. And then say, wasn't worship good this morning? Say, wasn't worship good this morning? Come on, let, your, let our worship team know we love them. We're so grateful for what God is doing in their life. I'm telling you, man. I don't, I don't know, man. It's just it, some people, they, they'll get a favorite movie, and they'll go, oh, man, I got to catch this movie. I got to get this movie. I, I got to get there. To me, I, got, I just got, I got something different beyond a favorite movie. I've got a place called Church. That honestly, every Sunday, I just can't wait to get here to see what God's going to do in it through the lives of his people. And I don't know about y'all, worship like that, I just want to stay in it. That's some good stuff. Can we show some better love to our worship team? We know it's God. We know it's God working in through their life, and they're just yielding to what the Spirit of God wants to do. But, I'm, I, you know, it's, it's good to... God uses people to show tangible love. Can I get an amen? And to be truthful, we could not fulfill the vision here to reach and rescue people with God's love if we didn't have people who were willing to serve every Sunday to make it happen. Because God chooses to use people to show that tangible love. And God will use you. God will use you, whether it's through inviting somebody to church. God will use you, whether it's just to listen. How many guys know good communication is also listening? to be an ear to hear what, what they want to say, but also to hear what the Spirit wants to say through you to them. Can I get an amen? And that's a showing that love of God. And if we'll show that love, God's love, to these people, I believe that we can truly change the world. So many people say, that just sounds just like a cliche. You got to understand, Jesus basically flipped the world upside down in three years. Three years. He had three years to take care of business, and he literally radically changed lives everywhere he went. Signs, wonders, and miracles, people getting set free, blind eyes open, people raised from the dead. And do you know, I need to remind you this morning, the same power that raised even Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. Come on, somebody. We've got that wonder-working power. we got Holy Ghost power working inside of us. And, and, and to me, I'm telling you, there's no, there's no greater place than being in the presence of God. And there's no greater place I'd rather be than in his presence. Can I get an amen? Anybody love Jesus like that besides me? Come on, come on, I got to hear it. Amen. It, it's not just, just, some people say, well, it's just preachy talk. No, it, I, I can't talk like this unless I've lived that. It's not hype. I'd be rapping to you if it was that. No, it's real. It's real life experience. It comes out because, it, listen to me, that's what came in. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, God is good. Do y'all really believe God is good? Amen. Well, I'm, I'm, I need to go ahead and get into what God has prepared on my heart to share with you. Uh, it's it just, 
I was looking at some of the things that God has placed on my heart. I write things down. I just start jotting and writing things down. And I'm like, Lord, with all this, man, this is going to be a 35-part series. And so, um, but show me what to do. So for right now, we're going to stay in the flow. Can I get an amen? Uh, until I, I feel like we need to shift or transition in a different direction. But uh, have y'all been blessed so far? Come on, can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. Once again, tell your neighbor I'm ready to receive. If you're watching online in the chat box, please go ahead and put I'm ready to receive. Let me take off like this. I'm going to stare away from my notes just for a moment because this is just something that was going through my mind that was I was sitting there uh, right before I came up. I, I want you guys to know that as, as pastors, Becky and I, I want you to know, we go through storms just like anybody else. Becky's mom's in the hospital. Uh, there's, there's stuff going on there. It's serious. Uh, but we have to use our faith. We don't just come up here to try to pump you up, though it's okay to motivate you. We want to motivate you. We do want you motivated. But you got to understand, we're also trying to get you to operate, not just hear about something, but operate in something. And somebody say, it's called faith. Tell your neighbors, it's called faith. And I believe faith works. Why? Because I've seen it work time and time again. But it's not just having faith. It's who we have our faith in. It ain't in the doctors, though we have some faith in the doctors. But I have my faith in Jesus, the chief physician, our healer. Can I get an amen? And I want you guys to know that, listen to me, that nobody's exempt from the challenges and the struggles and the things that we face in life. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you're exempt from that. To be truthful, when you're a pastor, a lot of people don't know this because we don't share it much or teach it much. Actually, we're a moving target. God, I'm preaching. We are. We're a moving target. That's why we know the importance, though it takes a while sometimes for us, for people to capture this. We understand the importance of abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Can I get an Amen. We understand the importance of staying in faith and how fear can mess you up. Because faith is what changed, listen to me, not only my life, but faith in God is what has caused me to go from glory to glory. How many guys know we go from faith to faith to glory to glory? It's what God has caused me to move and grow and elevate and get closer to Him. I trust in Him. I, I have my faith and my trust in Jesus. And, and listen to me, because I've gotten to know Him more and, and see His goodness and, and see Him. He, he, if He did it back then, He'll do it again. I've seen Him heal my wife. I've seen Him do all these different things. Listen to me, it's, He's too good not to believe is what I'm trying to say. Let me just get there. And so, also, we're not naive to all the challenges that, hap that we see happening in the world. I know there's a lot of fake news. I know a lot of times even the fake news that we hear, it can even cause some division amongst people, division not just politically. Sometimes it even causes division in the church. You mention certain words like racism or homosexuality or different things like that. Boom, people cringe like, oh, ah, no, I better find the back door and get out of here real quick. It's right away it already. But to be truthful, as Christians, I get it when the world acts like As Christians, really, we ought to all be on the same page. Y'all ain't hearing me. This is the page we ought to be on. Same page, the Word. Can I get an amen? But with all these things going on in the world, many times if you're a parent in the room, if whether you're a mom or dad, you're a pastor, a leader, how many guys know those things can sometimes be a little overwhelming? It's like, why is all this craziness just going on out there? We see it in the schools, we see it in our government, and we even see it economically. How many guys know gas prices, oil prices? It's like, what is going on? So we're not naive to these things, but here's what I want to tell you. The key is for us as Christians and believers is we can't allow what we feel. Because how many guys know sometimes you can feel overwhelmed, sometimes you can feel fear, sometimes you can feel worried. We can't allow what we feel to override our faith in God. Let me finish it out. In God. Can I get an amen? amen. And so, it, it's, it, and I see it. I see it so many times. You talk to people, whether it's a believer or not a believer. I could be talking to my neighbor. I'll be talking to somebody in the store, wherever it may be. It's crazy how so many times people are, I'm, oh, man, I'm battling, man, stress. I'm stressed out. I'm really stressed out, dude. 
I'm stressed out. But listen to me. I'm telling you, man. Some of you guys who are old school know what I'm talking about. Cheech and Chong's didn't just smoke weed. Listen to me. Sick of weed ain't going to fix it for you. I don't care how, how many times they say, oh, man, marijuana's legal. But it ain't going to fix it for you. You need something bigger than marijuana. Can I get an A-bid? That's a temporary fix. Don't you want something that's more permanent? Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. And people say, I'm stressed out, I'm stressed out, or I'm dealing with anxiety, or you hear it all the time. Now they're talking about kids dealing with it and this and that. Listen to me, when is the church going to wake up and realize we need to put a stop to this? Because, come on, somebody, help me out. Well, we got to do this. We ain't got to get the government right. We got to get to something. No, is your faith and trust in the government, the teachers, and in God? We got to put our faith and trust in God. We got to remember, listen to me, this is what works. He's never failed. He is faithful. He has done it time and time again. I will not allow what I feel to override my faith. I believe with God all things are possible. Can I get an amen from the church? Amen. And that's why, that's why the Bible tells us this. And I'm, I'm just going to say this real quickly. Worry and fear, listen, we can't change your circumstance, but faith in God can. And so watch what Psalms, that's why Psalms 52, and there's, there's other scriptures in the New Testament that, that share the same uh, text. And it says this, Psalms 55, 22, it says this. Y'all put that on the screen. It says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Cast your cares. In the King James, it uses the word burdens. We sing that song, lay your burdens down. Cast your burdens, cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will keep you. He will hold you up when you feel like you're going to fall. But you got to do what first? Somebody say, cast your cares. You got to cast your cares and he will what then? Sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Another, another translation says he'll never let you slip or fall. Because he's holding you. When God's holding you, you can't. You may go like, but God will hold you up. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Somebody say he's good. <clears throat> So here's what I want to share with you. I want to say, stop worrying about what's going wrong and start thanking God and start praising God and start trusting in the God who can make things right. Come on, somebody. People always talking about what's going wrong, but why can't we do what we're supposed to do as Christians? We're not supposed to be spreading the bad news. We're supposed to be spreading the good news. Come on, somebody. Amen. I believe, and I don't know about you, but I still believe that God can make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. I believe God is my way maker. I believe God is my chain breaker. I believe God is a promise keeper. Can I get an amen? His promises are yes and amen. If God said he would do it, he says, guess what? I'll back it up and I'll make sure it shall come to pass. That's why his word will not return void in your life. Amen. God is really that good. Somebody say he is good. And we need to remember his goodness. And the more we remember his goodness, I believe the more we'll share and we'll talk about his goodness. Can I get another amen? Whew, hallelujah. So we need to trust. We need to thank. We need to praise. We don't need to be worried and stressed out. Why? Because the Bible says you can do what? Cast your cares. Cast your care. You can cast. Well, what are you carrying? What are you carrying? What did you walk in this morning with? What are you carrying? Because I, I, I know some people like to act like they're just a super hyper spiritual giant. But I promise you, if you live in that world that's really out there, I guarantee you there's something that tries to get on you every single day. And if you really love people and you care about people, sometimes caring can cause you to carry what you're supposed to lay down. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so there's nothing wrong with caring about your finances, but we're not supposed to worry about our finances. 
There's nothing wrong with caring about your family. You should care about your family. But you're not supposed to worry about your family. Y'all hear me? Why? Because I've casted my care unto the Lord. And if I casted my care unto the Lord, I have nothing to worry about. You feel heavy. You feel heavy. Some people say, I just feel like on my chest. It's on my chest. I feel stressed. It's on my chest. I don't want to go too far because some of you already started to feel it. I'm going to pause right there. Listen, I'm telling you. It's on me because you're carrying it. You need to cast your care unto the Lord. I'm glad you care about what's going on in America, but listen, don't worry about it. I'm glad you care about your friends and the people you love and even your church family, but don't worry about it. We're never supposed to worry about what people even think of us. Cast your care. You can tell when people are really casting their care because they don't post it on social media. Ooh, got quiet up in here. Woo, I just hit somebody right there. And I believe you just got set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I got the word. That word to change your life. Because the word is truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. It will set you free. I'm glad you care about your health, but you shouldn't worry about your health. And I want to show you something. I'll, I'm going to get into to what I'm going to talk about today, but I, I, want, I wanted to share this one little last nugget with you. I'm going to say something real quickly, church. I want you to know, Becky and I, like we care about my mother-in-law. We care about her health. But listen, we're not going to worry about it. Let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you we're not going to worry about it. Because here's the thing. This is what the Lord showed me. And this is, this is going to help some of y'all. This one little thing, if you just leave with this from church today, you just got overflow in your life. Because listen, when you worry about something, when you begin to worry about something, listen to me. As I, if we were to worry about her health, we begin to worry about it. What happens is you begin to worry. How many guys know you can't operate in God's or rest in God's grace? If I could worry, you can't worry and rest in God's grace at the same time. So if I worry about something, I can't rest in God's grace. And if I can't rest in God's grace, then I don't have peace. No wonder why you don't have peace. No wonder why you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Whatever that means. Because how many of you guys know it can lead to a lot of other things? It didn't start off at anxiety. It starts out with worry. You get what I'm saying? Meaning like what people, when they want to get in our air, they worry about getting on the plane. But when they get on the plane, now they're dealing with anxiety. So when you begin to worry, when you begin to worry, listen to me, you can't rest in God's grace. And when you can't rest in God's grace, you don't have God's peace, but you also don't have God's power. And so that's why we shouldn't worry, because when you begin to worry, it will lead to other things. But also what you begin to do is you begin to hinder God's power in your life. I did a whole series talking about how we can unlock, not block, blessings. And what you begin to use, you begin to hinder that. And God revealed that to me. He showed it to me in little baby steps here and here years ago. And God told me even when my wife was battling her symptoms, and God said, listen to me, quit talking about it for number one, because your words, see how many guys know you can prophesy with your words? So I'm going to quit talking about the negative, start speaking the positive, and we did that. And then God said, you need to listen to me, quit worrying about it. Now, what do you have to do? The only way I can quit worrying about it is how many guys know I've got to what? Cast my cares upon the Lord. So I don't carry what I'm not built to carry. It, wore, it, it would have wore me out. So I want, I want you guys to, to write this down because this is so powerful. Watch this. Grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. Y'all didn't catch that. Listen to me. Grace flows in the worry-free areas of your life. 
Why? Watch this, watch this. You can't rest in his grace. Matter of fact, you not only hinder, but you begin to block because what opens the door of grace? What allows all the blessings that he's already supplied, already given you to, to flow or operate in your life? The only way it can flow in my life is through faith. So if I get into fear, I begin to hinder what God is actually or actually desires to do in my life. He's already supplied it, but now you've hindered it. All because of worry. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So grace, listen to me, it can only flow in the worry-free areas of your life. Come on, somebody. Meaning God wanted my wife healed when we prayed and we laid hands on her. But listen to me, I had to lay hands and pray in what? Faith, not fear. Lord, please, I beg you, do this. Oh, God. No, I'd say, Lord, I believe you can. I, I believe, listen, we by, you said, by your stripes, we are healed in the name. That's faith. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now grace can flow. Give me peace. Give her peace. Now his power can flow, and now he can begin to heal. And when he heals, how many guys know we get set free? Can I get an Amen from whatever is trying to bind us. So this morning, I'm going to speak on the subject of, watch this, learn to live worry-free. I'm going to say that again, learn to live worry-free. Learn to live worry-free. Barna Research did a study, and they said that like 69, it used to be 61%, it's gone up, 69% of Americans are worrying or stressed out every day. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And as a Christian and as a believer, you don't need to live in worry. You need to live worry-free. So I want you to go ahead and come on, go ahead and make this declaration. I want you to say right now, say, I'm learning to live worry-free. One more time. Say, I'm learning to live worry-free. Amen. Amen. I want you to say it like you mean it. I love this quote. Can y'all put that quote on the screen? It says, worry won't stop the bad stuff from happening. It just stops you from enjoying the good. I see it. I see it. I can already tell. I can already tell that right there what they're dealing with now probably started way back then because they started off with worrying. Worrying. And they're still dealing with the, the same symptoms because they're just symptoms. They're not yours. Can I get an amen? They're still dealing with the same t symptoms because they haven't learned how to truly medicate it. God, I'm preaching right now. Listen to me. You, you, need to, you need to medicate it with what God says. And many times, listen to me, many times you have to take a natural step before you see a spiritual result. I am preaching right now. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to take those natural steps before she got the spiritual healing. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. I didn't say every time, but many times. It's what you have to do. And how many guys know God always does his part? Can I get an amen? So I want to encourage you to stop wearing yourself out with worry. People are always tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on your eating habits and all those other kind of things, but I am going to tell you something. Listen to me. If you're constantly worrying about things, dealing with stress, anxiety, fear, all those things constantly coming to your life, I'm here to tell you it's no wonder why you look like you're carrying a ton of bricks on your back. you got a big old backpack on your back, and not only that, you look like you're tired all the time. And, you, and, and you're trying to use caffeine to wake you up. I'm not against caffeine. You guys know I'm a coffee drinker. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to need something more powerful than caffeine. And his name is Jesus. I know many people zoom in on the coffee thing because I talk about it, but you've got to realize this to me. Listen to me. Before coffee, listen to me, there's always Jesus. And coffee's in the morning. Jesus is every day, 24-7. I don't lean on caffeine. I lean on Jesus. I enjoy my coffee. But I don't have to have my coffee. Some of y'all say, I got to have a pastor. Oh, my God, pray for me. We'll pray for you later on. I know I've seen some of y'all as grouchy as could be. And I say, Merry Christmas. We'll get you some coffee. Amen, amen. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But I'm just here to tell you, this. you better learn to lean on Jesus. 
Because if you totally become dependent on the caffeine when the caffeine isn't there, how many of you guys know you're a totally different person? I don't have to have the caffeine. I learned how to lean on Jesus. I'm grateful for the caffeine, but I don't have to have the caffeine. Y'all catching what I'm saying? Somebody just got a revelation. I know you just did. Amen. Somebody say, my husband got set for No, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Amen. But we got to stop wearing ourselves out with worry. How many guys know worry makes things worse, not better? Worry cannot change the past, and it can't even change the future. So why are you worrying? Worry, watch this. Worry is a mental poison that makes you physically sick over time. Do you know that worry, because of worry, they have found out that there are people that actually, listen to me, are dealing with symptoms at an early age. Even people in their 20s dealing with these symptoms they shouldn't be dealing with. And I'm telling you, it all, it all stems back to worry. Why? Why? Because how many guys know you cut the supply of God's power working in your life when you're constantly worrying? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Well, he renews my youth. He can't renew your youth when you're worrying. I believe he can. If you really believe he can, then why are you worrying? Faith and fear can't operate in the same space. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You're fooling yourself. That's why you're still where you're at. You better get the truth of God's word so now you can truly be set free. I'm preaching it. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I receive it. <clears throat> worry, you got to realize that worry, whether you don't know this, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know this. Worry is a type of emotional bondage. And how many of you guys know worry always comes at a bad time? Y'all ever notice that? It always comes at a bad time. It don't ever come at a good time. It always comes at a bad time. So number one is this. That was supposed to be comical. Some of y'all laugh, but anyways, number one is this. Mm, I love this. Live free from the bondage of worry and allow God to work in your life by faith. Somebody say faith. Come on. Live free. Live free from the bondage of worry and allow God to work in your life by faith. How many guys know ultimately the goal of worry is to what? To drain, deplete your faith and your trust in God. That's ultimately what it wants to do. And what I'm going to do is, I, I was going to use a different scripture, but I felt kind of like, I don't know, like Lord told me, he goes, no, don't use what David said. I want you to use what I said for a moment. And I'm going to tell you what Jesus said about worry. And this is in his sermon upon the mount, and he, and he says this, but we're going, to, we're going to start with verse 25. Matthew 6, verse 25. I'm just going to point one thing out in verse 25. And it says this, and I love it. This is Jesus, remember, speaking. And he says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. i got to pause there for a moment. Jesus is telling us not to worry about everyday life. Some of y'all worried about your kids. Some of y'all worried about your finances. Some of y'all worried about what people think about you. Every day you're worrying, you're worrying. There's a big difference between worry and concern. It's okay to have a concern or a care for people, but don't you carry it. Because now it's worry. So Jesus says, that's why I told you, is not to worry about everyday life. He says, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body and more than clothing? Isn't it crazy how Jesus can relate to us way back then to right now? It seems like everything you see on Instagram, everything you see, everything's all about what I wear, what I got, blah, 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 all about me, 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 you know what I mean? And I want to have more of it so I can, me, 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 me can look better. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You saying, why, why are you worried about that stuff? Life's a lot more. There's more to life than all that. God, it's a whole other message. <laughs> can, and can I say something? He said, do not worry. I'm, I'm just going to pause for a moment. And I want to just tell you what the King James says, because some of y'all I know in this room know it. But he says this. Can you put the King James up? I just want to show you. I just, it's, it's too good to pass up. Y'all put that up there. And the King James, he says, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, etc., etc. It says to take no thought for your life. And later on he talks about worry. That's what the thought is. Jesus is saying, listen to me, why would you take a thought in your mind that causes worry. He says, quit taking it. You only worry because you took on the thought. 
Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's why Becky and I always go back to the mind, talking to people about their mind. Because even Jesus said, he said, take no thought. Why are you allowing the thought to be there is what Jesus is saying. He says, don't take the thought. Let the, and even if you take the thought, how many guys know you need to let it go? Because if you'll let it go, now God's grace can what? Flow. God's grace can't flow when you take on a thought of worry because worry hinders God's grace. You can't rest in that grace. That's why you have no peace once again. Because you took on a thought you should have let go of. Doesn't mean the thoughts won't come, but doesn't mean you have to take hold of it. And when you take hold of it, how many guys know we can tell you've taken hold of it? Because that's where, how many guys know that's the direction your life begins to go? Because as a man think, is, think so is he. God, y'all hearing what I'm saying? God, it's good stuff. So Jesus himself says, take no thought. Don't take no thought. You, you, you add the thought, but don't take hold of it. Let it go. Let it tell somebody real quick. Say, hey, let it go. Let it go. Let that thought of worry go. Let that thought of stress go. Let that thought of anxiety go. Let it go. Cast your cares upon me. Let it go, and now my grace will flow. Can I get an amen? You got to let it go. Why? Because as long as you hold on to the thought, whatever you're worrying about is now in your hands, not in his. And a long time ago, the Lord, the Lord spoke to me through another pastor. Twice God did this. Once God spoke to me when she got healed through another minister, and God spoke to me again. And I was asking the Lord about something, about why something was delayed. And the Lord spoke through another man to me, and God, and God said this. He says, as long as you... As long as you hold that thought, I mean, as long as you're worried about that. And how many of you guys know when you get, being a Christian for a while, you, you try to cover up sounding spiritual. I'm just concerned about the matter, Jesus. No, you're worrying about it. And God, God dealt, spoke to another man to me, and he said, listen to me, as long as you hold the thought, he says, you've got to make it happen. He said, basically, like, this is the way he put it to me. He said, basically this. He says, while you work, God rests. But when you rest, God works. Y'all didn't catch that. As long as you're trying to do it in your power, he guess what? I'm going to kick back and just rest. But if you'll give it to me and allow me to do it, you can rest and watch me work it out for your good. Come on, that preaches right there. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. Amen. That also means this when he says, take no thought. And I've, I've shared this before, and I'm going to keep saying it over and over. That means you have the power to choose what thought you take hold of. He's telling you to take no thought. It means you can choose it. Can I get an amen? Meaning, listen to me, worry is a choice, not a condition. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm preaching right there. The thing is, the thing is, watch this, the thing is, and I, I can't get too deep in this, but I just got to add a little more to that to support that. It's a choice. It's ultimately a choice. Everything that happens in here is a choice. And, and there's a battle going on in the mind every day in each and every one of us. As long as you're in this earth suit and this flesh, it's going to exist. Are y'all hearing me? That's why you need to build yourself up in the holy faith. That's why you need to remember you constantly get an intake of the word. Because how many of you guys know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God? It's crazy how so many how people think they don't need church. It just wows me. It's like, okay, I already know. My, my heart actually putters. It's called a cringe factor. Pastor, we, my heart putters, and I already know where their life's heading. And I pray, and I'm like, Lord, steer them, do something. It ain't going to work. I know it ain't going to work. But listen to me, how many of you guys know they have a choice? I can't choose for them. They have to choose it. You have the choice. You have, you have to choose. You have to choose to take that thought. You have to choose to feel your faith, but you also have to choose on what you allow into your mind. You're the gatekeeper of your own mind, so to speak. Can I get an amen? And so many times, many times in life, uh, my heart goes out to people in this and that because as I could tell they're taking on thoughts that they're supposed to be laying down once again. But I also know this. What happens is 
it's very simple. Sometimes, just like people do this in life, they can also do this in their mind. How many guys do you can get lazy minded? I'm not going to sit on it long. But the many, most of the reason why you won't let go of that thought is because, honestly, to be truthful, is because you've gotten so used to it. Number one, you become a little bit numb to it, but two, you're just lazy minded because it takes effort. to let it go. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Just because, listen to me, listen to me, if you're allowed, listen to me, if you're not allowing yourself to let it go, not only are you hindering the grace of God moving in your life because you can't rest in that grace, but two, if you're not allowing to go over time, I promise you, you'll become even more lazy minded. See, faith only grows when you exercise it. Y'all ain't hearing me. Come on, somebody. You got, listen to me, don't, you let it go. How many guys, it isn't just going to happen. Just boom, go, oh, and you've got to exercise your faith and you got to say in the name, I say thought, go. Faith, come on somebody. Faith will cause, when you exercise, it will cause that thought to go. There's thoughts that come into my mind many times and I'm like, Lord, help me. Help me because I'm a pastor and if I go up and I say what I really want to say, I'll make the news the wrong way so Lord help me let me mm, let that thought go and then I've got to speak the word how many times has Becky shared that and I replaced that thought with the word and the word is what brings faith Whew, come on somebody that's why I said you got to do this by faith by faith by faith tell your neighbor say faith amen so watch watch let's go on to verse 26 uh, yeah, verse 26. Uh, yeah, because I just read verse 25. Let's go to verse 26. And I love what Jesus says. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to some points really quickly in here. I, I don't have time to break it all down, but I just want to, I, I do want you to go back. I'm going to challenge you. I, I hardly ever do this. I want to challenge you to go back. There's so much meat in this scripture. It is, it is wild. It, the, it not just, I'm not just talking about metaphors. I'm talking the illustrations that Jesus used speak to us as Christians. It's powerful. He says, first he says, look at the birds. I do got to just throw that out there. How many of you guys know when he, Jesus says, look, you want to look. But where are the birds at? They fly high. Jesus is saying, sometimes, listen to me, you need to look, look at the birds. You need to look up. Meaning you got to change your perspective. If you'll change your perspective, it'll help you to focus on the right thing. God, that preaches right there. Oh, my goodness. He says, look at the birds. They do not plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father, what feeds them? And, are, and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? He gave his life for you. You're way more valuable than they are. Whew. Can all your worries add to a single moment to your life? God, isn't that so good? I'm going to say this. Jesus is saying, first thing he's saying, his worry won't help you live longer or have a better life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? All right, I'll be a little more literal. Jesus is saying you can't worry your way into an extra hour of life, but you can take a few hours off of it. How? By worrying. Think about it. Think about it, worrying, worrying. How many guys know it can lead to something else that how many guys know it can cause not only some, some mental or emotional exhaustion, though, because when you worry, it wears on you. When it wears on you, you're always fatigued. You're always tired. And listen to me, and you look like it all the time. Like, your fate, everything, your demeanor, everything begins to change. And listen to me, those are just the beginning symptoms. Ultimately, how many guys know the devil doesn't want you to live worry-free because if you continue to worry, he knows where it's heading. And listen to me, it won't, it won't add to your life. It will take off your life. And it will lead to other things. And the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. So quit blaming God for what the devil's trying to do in your life. God, once again, is the answer. He's not the problem. What you need to do is start putting your faith and trust in the one who can reverse the worry in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. Worry. You, he'll reverse the worry. He'll reverse the curse. It's, it's, it is not from God. Come on, somebody. Enemy can't, he don't always know what you're thinking, but he can't plant a seed. <sighs> Come on, somebody. I'm preaching right there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
How many guys know if you allow worry to stay, if you allow it to stay, how many guys know it's going to rob you of your joy, your peace? And sooner or later, it's going to deplete your faith. And then you begin to question God. God, why this? God, why that? God, this. And I'm not saying that, there, that you can't question God. I question God too. But what I am saying is this to me. Don't begin, begin to question God like you begin to doubt him. You need to say, hey, devil is a liar. And you better back up. Y'all better, better learn how to do the moonwalk real quick. If I had the right shoes, I'll moon for, moonwalk for you right now. I'll bust a Michael Jackson on you right now. But you better back up real quick and you better rephrase your words. Can I get an amen? You're allowing worry to weigh on you. And when it weighs on you, sometimes we talk about the problem. We talk about the symptom instead of talking about the answer, which is God's word. Can I get an amen? I'm helping somebody. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. How many of you guys know Jesus is saying worry? Worry is, I, I, this is, how should I say this, Lord? I get it when people say, when people say, well, you're only human. <laughs> yeah, but to me, it sounds like a cop out. I'm just going to be real because I know I'm, I'm only human, but I also know who I am in Christ. So I'm not only human, I'm also a Christian, a Christ follower. And I've got something that other humans don't have that don't know Jesus. I've got Holy Ghost power working in me. I've got the Word working inside of me. So when you say, Pastor, we're only human, that's why we worry. I get worry will show up, but I don't have to take hold of the thoughts. Can I get an amen? And listen to me, my God has been too good to me time and time again. And listen to me, there's nobody else that I've ever encountered in my life that has truly been faithful. People will lie to you. People will backstab you. People will say one thing and do another. But when God says that he is faithful, he's true to his word. He does it time and time again. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? If God be for me, who can be against me? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I shall not fear. I shall not worry. Because I know who's on my side. Amen. God, is that good? God, I just felt like preaching right there. Can y'all let me do it? Amen. <laughs> so Jesus is basically telling us, just in these few verses, there's more. He's saying, how many guys know worry is never healthy for you? You may be human, but it's never healthy. So don't use that as a cop-out. It's not healthy. It's not healthy for you spiritually. It's not healthy for you physically. That's why Jesus says, come on, guys. Why do you worry? Why do you worry? Why, why do you worry? Why, why, why do you worry? Ask yourself, why do you worry? Why, why do I worry? Why, I got angels that God says that, I can activate with the Word. I, I've got the Holy Ghost with me wherever I go. Well, why do I worry? Well, my, don't you know, Pastor, that there are people out there that are trying to, to get to our kids and the schools. There's gun shooting, this and that. But did you pray over it? Now, I, I, I'll try to meet you halfway. You're, you probably are in worry if you didn't pray. But you better make sure you pray in the morning. Because the Bible's very clear. It says that we're supposed to not worry about everything, but pray about everything. I don't worry because when I prayed, I pray, I prayed a covering. I prayed a hedge of protection. I, I prayed that angels on assignment watching over my children. Why worry? All it's going to do is make matters worse. All it's going to do is steal my joy and my peace. All it's going to do is cause me to doubt God. And if I doubt God, oh my goodness, maybe I'm hindering God's protection by worrying 
but I really stay in faith and believe that God is watching over me and over them because I prayed this morning and I know if God says it in his word, he will do what he said he would do. Can I get an amen? Angels are watching over them. I can't speak for other parents, but I know my children are protected because he is my defender. He is my shield. He is my buckler. He is my strong tower. He is my protector. Come on, somebody. Somebody th say, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> it's no wonder, why, no wonder why he tells us over and over, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. How many guys know that worry is a distractor of the promises of God? Y'all can put those on the screen. <clears throat> I don't normally put these on the screen, but I wanted you to have them. I felt they were good and you needed to have them. Worry is a distractor of the promises of God. How many guys know it screams, look at me, not at God and his promises? It's a distractor of the promises of God. It wants you to focus on the problem, not the promise. It doesn't want you to remember that every promise in his word is yes and amen. You know when it begins to scream, it's because you held the thought. God, I'm preaching right there. That's why we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Remember that he will supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I've got a few amens. Watch. Worry is a reminder of what you don't have instead of what you do have in Christ. That's what worry does. You mean, I, I, don't, I don't have enough. I don't, I don't, I don't have. Yeah, what do you mean you don't have enough? I just don't, Pastor. I don't. I get it right now in your hand. You, you may not have enough, but you have everything you need in his hand. And if you worry what's in his hand, get, it can't get into your hand. <sighs> Maybe it's worry that's hindering God from moving in your life and in your situation. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's powerful. Mm -mm, I got to keep moving. Worry is a waste of time, energy, and resources. You want to be a good steward of, over your time, the time that God's given you? Listen to me. The time you have is a gift. You didn't give it to yourself. Every, listen to me. Every day, every, every time you take a breath, that is a gift. That's a gift. You only breathe because God says you can breathe. When, in the very beginning, when Adam became a living being, the Bible says he, he breathed into Adam, Adam and he became a living being. From the very beginning, God gave the first breath to man, and that's how we breathe today. If God wants to pull it, he can pull it any time, but God won't pull it. Can I get an amen? Because he's not that kind of God. The devil wants to pull it. God wants to keep it in you so you can breathe every day, fulfill his purpose, his calling in your life. Can I get an amen? But you can't fulfill your purpose and your calling in your life if you're wasting time with worry. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to be a good steward over my time. Then quit worrying. I didn't say it wouldn't come. It, it, it hits me. It hit me. It hit me. I'm, I'm, I'm over here going, Lord, I'm preaching to teenagers that should all go to hell, but Lord, I love them anyways. Oh, y'all looking at me all holy like you ain't never had that thought. Come on. I mean, these kids were bad. They wore shirts with cuss words on their shirts. These kids were doing things that I can't even get about as far as I can go. It was that bad. And I'm like, Lord, I mean, just uh, let me move on. But no, God, how many of you guys know God grace? Because our rested in his grace will give you everything you need to accomplish what God has called you to do. And because I didn't worry about what was going to happen, I just trusted God he would make a way, and he did. And all of a sudden, one teen, y'all, thank you. Thank y'all for the few. All of a sudden, one teenager got saved. Then the next teenager, next thing you know, you're in a room full of teenagers who never worship. They're like this. Or, 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 or they're, they're laughing at somebody who does. Oh, look at him. Next thing you know, they're all worshiping. Can I get an amen? That wasn't me. Are you crazy? That's pride if I think it's me. That was God's grace. It's His grace that is sufficient to meet every need in your life. Can I get an amen? Come on. So it would be a waste of time if we just worried about it. But God moved. Come on, somebody. Watch this. D, worry is a movie trailer of what could go wrong. Some of y'all got kids. Oh, they're supposed to be home at this time. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, my God, maybe they got an accident. 
Oh my God, so-and-so drive. I knew I shouldn't have let so-and-so drive the car. All these things. How many of you guys know you're already imagining all these things that could go wrong and it hasn't even happened? You're worrying just so you'll know. You need to let it go. Tell your neighbor you need to let it go. You got to let it go. We begin to worry about things that haven't even happened. Why are we doing that? Let it go. Tell your neighbor one more time. Say, let it go. This is one I've used before, and I love it. I, I, I had to put it in here. I've used this before. This is just too good not to put in here. Listen to me. Worry is a seed that will grow into a giant called fear. I shared that in a different message before. It, 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 I was talking about David, and it, it's powerful. Worry is a seed that will grow into a giant called fear. And how many guys know when it grows, it, it becomes a, a fear that grips you and controls you. And that's why the enemy doesn't want you to live worry-free because if he can get you to fear and live in fear, he will control you in the areas that he doesn't want you to operate in faith in. I've watched it. You're like a puppet on a string. Here, doesn't the devil will say, go ahead, and he'll allow you to do this, but he won't let you do this. Because he actually knows if you'll do this, you'll get set free. <laughs> but he uses fear to hold you back. But if you'll go ahead and faith it anyways, you'll break the control of fear. It may not happen on the first step. You may have to take a second step and a third step, but sooner or later, listen to me, that thing can only stretch so long before it has to break. I'm preaching. Come on, somebody. It may stretch for a while, but sooner or later, that fear will break. The only way you can overcome fear is with faith. So if you won't step out in faith, you're always going to deal with fear. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In reality, in reality, let me, matter of fact, not, I shouldn't even say it is reality, but let me say, use a different word, literally, biblically, literally. Actually, you know what fear is? Fear is contaminated faith. That's what the Bible says. That's literally what it is. It's just contaminated faith. Where does it get contaminated right here? Take no thought. Ay, ay, ay. Y'all get my Spanish to come out. Come on, somebody. <sighs> my wife said, no. I know, I know, I heard you. <laughs> I'm ignore that thought. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this, Matthew. Six, let me go down to verse 28, and it says this, verse 28. Jesus, once again, you got to remember, he's talking. He says, and why worry about your clothing? Look at all the lilies of the field and how they grow. Wow. Underline grow. I, I can't go there. I'm out of time, but go back and study it. There's a reason why he said uh, how they grow. He says, they don't work. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That doesn't mean you can quit your job tomorrow. Y'all need to chill. He's talking about, actually there it's referring to the law. It's like, do you need to flow in grace, not in the law? That's actually what he's talking about. I know some of y'all like that one. Anyways, they don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And you got to remember Solomon. You got to—he is still probably today the most richest guy ever on the planet. Had everything. Let's continue. And then he says, verse thirty. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are that are uh, here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Everybody say faith. Why, why, why do you have so little? faith why do you uh, and I love that because that just makes me feel better because I'm I feel like Jesus sometimes I'm like Lord why did they have such little faith I, I don't get it I think Jesus is going why why do you have such little faith look at everything around you I, I take care of all this I take care of all those flowers only grow because I let them grow those birds only fly because I let them fly the streams only flow because I let them flow the mountains only exist because I called them into existence. 
The rain only falls because I allow it to fall. The sun only shines because I allow it to. What are you worried about? I created the universe, the moon, the stars. Everything that you see is because I said it can be. Why do you worry? And why do you doubt me? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That's about the quickest way I could put that. I love it. So then he says, this is so good. He says, verse 31. He says, so, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Isn't it crazy? God already knows what you need before you even know you need it. So many times when he answers you with a prayer, sometimes he gives you what you thought. You sh you're like, oh, no, Lord, I didn't ask for that. God says, I know, but this is what you need. Can I get a better amen? <clears throat> the first time that ever happened to me, I think I've shared it before. The first time it ever had me, I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I, we, Becky and I want to be extravagant givers. We want to be givers, Lord. Just keep, you know, keep blessing us, blessing us. And God spoke to me. He says, I did. I said, what do you mean? I, I didn't really get a whole lot. And, and, and God, I ain't got a whole lot. And the Lord's like, no. no. He goes, listen to me. I didn't give it to you in harvest yet. I gave it to you in the form of a seed. You wanted the harvest, but you didn't sow yet. So God said, I gave you the seed. Now sow the seed and watch the harvest come. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Amen. Verse 33, most of y'all know the scripture, and I love it. And then he says, this is so crazy. Right after all that, we never hardly ever share that part of it. And it's just great. He says, these things dominate the thoughts of believers, but your heavenly Father already knows all, all, not some, but all your needs. Verse 33, then he says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above money. Seek the kingdom of God above what those clothes you say you want. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And watch, and live righteously. You got to live right. And he will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need. Not everything you want, but he will give you everything you need. And I believe God is so good that he'll even throw in, in something you want. Because he just loves you that much and truthfully because God always exceeds your expectations. Can I get an amen? I love it. And so if you're going to seek the kingdom above everything else. Isn't it crazy how we always want kingdom results without first seeking a kingdom connection? I, I want kingdom results, but you're not seeking kingdom connections. He says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, not just the influence, not just the virtue. That word also means that or power. But seek the kingdom, seek the kingdom of connections. Do you, do you, you want my promise, but did you pray? You want no worry, but did you worship? Oh my gosh, I'm talking to y'all. Are y'all hearing what I'm getting at? You got to seek the kingdom connection. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. And guess what? If you'll do that, I, I will supply all your needs. I will give you everything you need because that kingdom connection allows everything to flow. Allows me to flow into your life. Allows me to flow into your mind. Did you seek that kingdom? Can it allow me to flow, to flow in it where I can flow, I can fix, I, I, I can supply any need that you have in your life. But we've got to seek the connection. Do y'all know that every time you come to church, this is a kingdom connection? 
you know, the Bible shows us in, in the Old Testament, it talks about how the living water begins to flow right here from the pulpit, from the altar, all the way down. All the way out the doors. Every time you come in here, how many guys know you, you should be seeking a kingdom connection? Why? Because there's living water. You need things to come back alive, then come in and seek a kingdom connection because you can walk in and still stay dry. That's why you walk out dry. Or you can jump in the river. Some people, they just, they just go ankle deep. Other people go knee deep. Some people go waist deep. Other people say, no, I'm all in. Can I get an amen? Why? Because they truly gave their all to Jesus. I gave my all. I don't, I don't want just God to, 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 bless, to bless me down here or bless me here. I want God to bless me everywhere. He, he, grace only flows in the, the worry-free areas of your life. You want it to work in every area of life, you've got to give Him every area of your life. I'm preaching right now. Watch number two. I've got to close that. I'm out of time. I just say, I'll, I'll close quick. Watch this. Number two. <clears throat> Worry and fear can't follow you when you enter into God's presence. God, did y'all get that? Worry and fear can't, well, listen to me, it can't follow you. It can't. But it did because you didn't enter in His presence. I said, enter in, enter into God's presence. Just because you lifted your hands doesn't mean you entered into God's presence. See, a kingdom connection doesn't start with your hands. It starts with your heart. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a step further. A kingdom connection doesn't even start with your head. You can have a, you say, well, I'm connected because I'm there mentally. No, listen to me. You got to be there spiritually. And that only happens with your heart. God, I'm preaching once again. Enter into God's presence and worry and fear. It can't follow you. It's not allowed in there. The Bible says in his presence, there is what? Fullness. Not partially. Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Enter in his presence. And I'm telling you, worry and fear can't follow you. They have to flee. They have to leave. That's how you disconnect from what's connected by reconnecting with the kingdom connection. Can I get an Amen. As long as I'm connected to him, it can't connect to me. God preaching right now. Yeah, but, but it's there. Think, get a reconnection. Reconnect, get a kingdom connection because it cannot connect while you're connected to him. When you enter into God's presence, put the scripture up, I got to close out. And it says this in Psalms 91 verses 1 through 2. And you guys know I could have used a lot of scriptures here. It says, he who dwells in the secret place. Somebody say secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge. He is my safe place. He is my safety. Can I get an amen? And my fortress. Hallelujah. That means that he will shelter me because he is my fortress. That means he will protect me because he is my fortress. My God in him, I will what trust. You've got to realize that a secret place isn't a where, it's a who. Meaning the place is a person. The person is Jesus. Can I get an amen? You're in the presence. The place is the presence of God. When you're in that secret place, you're hidden from the enemy. Because you're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. There's only shadow because there's light covering you. You're in a hidden place. You're in a secret place. The place is the presence of God. It's who He is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're in that place. Fear can't follow you. Worry can't follow you. Doubt can't follow you. Sometimes you just got to get in the presence of God and all those things that are trying to be toxic in your mind, trying to contaminate your faith, will flee simply because they can't follow. And we're constantly trying to rebuke and command. And this, I'm not against that. We need to, but sometimes, listen to me, is it about rebuking the devil? Let, let, let's, let, let's just start worshiping the king. Oh, 
Wow, y'all ain't hearing me. Let's just start worshiping the king. Do you know if we'd worship the king and say connected, we wouldn't even have to rebuke the devil. Oh, I know that's too deep for some of y'all. I know y'all already want to test my theology. Oh, yeah? I'm not saying, I'm not saying there isn't a time for it. Remember when the disciples couldn't cast out the demon and they said, hey, why couldn't we cast this demon out? And Jesus said, this time only comes out by praying and fasting. Jesus said, there's some things that are only going to come out when you seek me. That's it. I seek you. Sometimes you just got to seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. Sometimes you just got to get a kingdom connection. Because when you get in his presence, oh, I am God. Fear, faith, nothing can follow you. Can I get an amen? I close with saying this. Learn to recognize when worry is trying to dominate or control your thought life. And go where worry and fear can't follow you. How many guys know that's in God's presence? That's why there's freedom in the presence of God. I said that's why there's freedom in the presence of God. Could you guys come grab my pulpit for me, please? Amen. Somebody said there's freedom in the presence of God. Thank you for the overtime, but here's the deal. There's somebody in this room listening to me. You are not worry-free. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus came to set you free from worry so you can live worry-free. And I'm going to tell you something. I said, well, learn. Learn to live worry-free because, listen to me, it's a process. But I'm going to tell you, if you take this step, how many guys know you're one step closer than you were before? And if you're in here right now and you say, Pastor, I've been dealing with worry, I've been dealing with stress, I've been dealing with anxiety, it weighs on me, you're right. It wears you out and I feel wore out and you're tired of it. I'm here to tell you, I'm tired of it being making you tired. And I'm listening, we're going to take authority over this right now. We didn't come here to just get a little word to feel good and you can leave, well, i got to get a little word. No, we're here because we want to see signs, wonders, and miracles and people set free and delivered from whatever is trying to hold them captive or bondage, in bondage. Amen. And I'm telling you, worry is a type of bondage. And if you're in your right now, that's me, Pastor. You're speaking. You're reading all up in my mail, blah, blah, blah. I want to know who told you. Nobody told me. Jesus did. The Holy Spirit did. And he's speaking to you today. If that's you, could you just stand where you're at? I want to pray for you real quickly. If that's you, stand right where you're at. You say, that's me. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. It comes back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Honey, come up here. Grab my mic real quick for the sake of time. Come on. Come on up here. Listen to me. Lift your hand towards heaven right now. Lift your hand towards heaven. Lift your hand towards heaven. Lift your hand towards heaven. Lift your hand. Look, Becky's got, I'm going to ask Becky to pray over you right now. I want her to pray, 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 pray over this. Worry's got to go. Fear's got to go. All this has got to go in the name of Jesus. Listen, we ask her to come back here with two. Listen, one could put a thousand in flight, two could put ten thousand in flight. Listen, we're coming up here right now on agreement. We're stepping and standing in the gap for you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all got to play it up for me. Play it up for me. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you that your presence is here. Thank you for your anointing. Your presence and your power is here right now. And right now, we take authority. I take authority. Give it to me by you. In the name of Jesus, I command every fear, every worry, anything that is not of you to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. You see your people, they're taking a step of faith as they stand. That is their step of faith saying, I need you, God. Move on my behalf. And so I thank you that right now you are meeting them right where they are. The devil is alive. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Your word is truth, and we stand on your word. And you said when we've done all we know to do, stand. And today they're standing, Father, with their hands up, lifted to you. They're not looking to man. They are looking to you. You, the author and the finisher of our faith, Father God, are in the room right now. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus, the name above all names, that fear and worry those things are gone in the name of jesus we cast them down yes. in the name of jesus in the name that of jesus. ugly thing cannot rear its ugly head again in the name we of jesus. chop that head off in the name of jesus oh, the we take the authority we bind yeah, worry yeah, yeah. in the name of jesus we cast our care because oh, yeah. you care for us we, we do down. what your word says we, we give it, it to you it is out of our hands we trust you yeah. lord you are bigger than anything we face. Yeah. Even those things that may seem insignificant to others, 
We no longer will yes. carry those things, Father God. Those things that may not be a big deal to anybody else, but they I'll have been in free. our life. Lord, you know what your free. people have been dealing with. Breathe your yeah. Zoe life into their situations, oh, yeah. Father God. We cast down every negative yeah. thought, every negative imagination, anything oh, yeah. that goes against your word. Woo. We command free. it to go Freedom. right now Freedom. in the name of Jesus. In Set your Jesus. people free Freedom. in Jesus' Freedom name. In the name of Jesus. It is not my word that oh, sets yeah. them free. It is yeah. your word being spoken, Ooh. Father God. And I speak your word that by the stripes yeah. of Jesus, they yeah. are whole and they are oh, healed free. in yeah. every way. In every way. Yeah. In every yeah. way. I declare it Ooh, and I yeah. decree it. In the yeah. mighty name of Jesus yeah. Christ, oh, be somebody, healed. It is somebody, done. Somebody say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. Come on, if you just got set free, say, I am free. I'm telling you, no devil has authority or power over you. Those chains that have tried to bind you are broken in the name of Jesus. Now, if you lifted your hands, if you stood, I want you to say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. Now say, I am free in the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. Come on, somebody celebrate your freedom for a moment. Celebrate your freedom. Come on, say, I am free. Celebrate.